Hey guys, welcome back to Artosis Cast. We are continuing with the China vs. Korea Race Survival Playoffs. This is the semifinals between Protoss and Terran, and we're down to the last Protoss player. Now, well, I say last, but there is always a revival in this format where uh, once all of your players have fallen, you revive one final player for one go. So uh, even if Paralyzed falls now, I think probably he or Sins would be revived and we'll see how that ends up going. Uh, but here he is in the top left, the Afro Toss himself. He's doing really, really well lately. I really think he's going to join the ranks of uh, ASL uh, consistently in the coming years. And of course, he's going up against Skay down here in the bottom right. Skay is very strong at the moment. Uh, definitely, you know, looking pretty good in that in that previous game. Guys, I do hope that you are uh, enjoying this uh, little uh, foray away from the ladder replays and, and everything else. Uh, yeah, I like to spice it up here occasionally. Not just for you guys, but for myself as well. Uh, so yeah, hope that you guys like it. And we're on Neo Dark origin uh you know so we have this forward gate and we have the very quick probe coming down to steal the gas and we'll see if skate tries to grab that gas or not so uh scv comes out immediately to try to harass the probe and he should pop up and steal the gas really soon here yeah you would have to cancel uh scvs to be able to get that at that point so a good gas grab and he will harass this scv a little bit and this is highly annoying of course, for any Terran player, you know, I've, we, we see the gas steal so, so often. I, I really do think that this is something you should always do. Anytime you can dictate the game, like you force the game into positions and it doesn't make you behind. It seems like that's just in general, in all games, a good idea. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's um, I wonder, though, you know, I've, I've kind of been thinking about this, OK? because like i follow like chess just a little bit just for fun and the one thing that i've found really really fascinating uh is reading about like magnus carlson and how he likes to uh deviate from opening theory as quickly as possible to beat his opponents just by being a better chess player rather than through memorization right and so I wonder about that if like, if you're just a player that's very good with standard openings, maybe it would be better to not gas, but it, it doesn't quite make sense to me, right? Like, I guess if you were like super, super robotic and can't think on your feet well, maybe that's a good situation for someone to not offensive gas. Cause that's kind of what I'm, I'm thinking about, right? Is like, uh, when would it make sense not to? Because it's something that I feel very strongly about. Every time I see a Protoss not offensive gas on a two-player map, it shocks me uh, because it does seem like it's just, it's such a strong thing to dictate that. Anyways, uh, let me know in the comments what you think about that that type of idea. Because I'm always like trying to think about Brood War in different ways. Like, I, I don't know. I read a lot of stuff about like different sports and competitions and, and stuff like that to try to, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's kind of to supplement Brood War and think about it in different ways. So I was just kind of thinking about that. Uh, so yeah, again, let me know in those comments. Thank you guys very much. Now, taking a look at what's gone on here, uh, bringing this Zealot up, like his Zealots have not done well, but he did have the offensive gas. We'll see a Nexus and there is that Nexus. Not, I mean, the command center, I, dude, it, like I call SCVs drones in my head. <laughs> I, I kind of call everything the same. Right? Like it, the mining structure, I just call a nexus or a command center. It doesn't matter the race, the worker, you know, I, I, it doesn't matter. It's like, it's all the same thing in my head, I guess. Uh, anyways, uh, so taking a look at this, what I, what I wanted to point out, right? He did the offensive eBay, which is really, really good uh, because it slows the nexus. So if you look at the nexus speed compared to the command center speed, the Protoss actually gets 400 minerals to make the nexus so much faster then you get it because you have to build the bunker and you have to have SCVs attacking here and you have to be building Marines nonstop. So uh, the offensive eBay kind of makes it closer, right? Like this is finishing and this is over halfway done. So that's not bad, right? You look at that as a Terran, you're like, okay, you were pretty happy here. Whereas this would have been like finished a while ago. It would have finished when the command center was like maybe here, right? So it's just, it's, yeah. It, it, Skay should be pretty happy with his position, I think. Now he needs to get that factory started. There's his fact just before five minutes. Robotics already on the way. 
Uh, there is no range on the way, which is kind of nice. You see Skay actually microing like really heavily here. One thing I want to mention, this bunker layout, like it's pretty heavily defensive. Like this is, this is the type of bunker layout though, that you would get in trouble if your opponent went like mass range. It would be a little bit annoying. You'd have to pull the SCVs around this way and line them up around this edge. Uh, that's not the case here, so it's not that big a deal. But you can see this is a really interesting Sim City. I've never seen it quite laid out like this on, on Neo Dark Origin. And he continues to push these Zolots back a little bit, which I like to see. Uh, the two Dragoons are out. He knows about that, of course, because they just killed his SCB. Second gateway on the way here. And Paralyze will probably go into speed shuttles here. He really, really, really likes the speed shuttle meta. Uh, you know, like Reavers into a decent amount of gateways and Psy Storm and, and that type of type of play. Uh, he's very, very good at it as well. Uh, he is a, like, he's a really strong Protoss in this matchup, I feel. Like, just overall, I guess. Uh, I've definitely cast a lot of Paralyzed games on, on this channel. Now, more Dragoons being made. And he does have the Observatory coming up, but knows how he's doing Shuttle. So he's going to do Shuttle, Observer, Reaver. And he'll start that uh, Reaver tech in just a moment here. Yeah, the Shuttle is out now. Observer gets started. Just kind of scout in the back, making sure nothing, nothing cheeky is happening. Throws a pylon down there. This is mostly for spotting dropships. It's like you don't really hop vultures against Protoss very often, especially not this late in the game. And there's the Reaver tech that we were talking about before. So he'll probably get right into... Uh, shuttle speed as well you can see that he's already taken this gas so that really points towards uh paralyze you know focusing heavily on these uh on upgrading the shuttles and it looks like he's going to be a reaver like two gate observer into reaver into third base and of course this is kind of part of the beauty of starcraft right like probably the most popular build right now is two gate observer into nexus third nexus into Reaver. Here he's gone Reaver into Nexus. And the thing is, yeah, it opened up with like a, you know, a um, offensive gas and all that and some Zealot pressure. So that does change things as well. But it's kind of one of the very cool things. It's kind of, it's almost like, hmm. It's like playing with Legos or something, right? Like there's, there's like a way that you can build it and then like, but you could make all these little changes and it's still the same thing, right? <laughs> kind of. I don't know if this is a good metaphor, but uh, yeah, you kind of can put your own stylistic choice on it and you can be like, okay, well, technically I have a couple less probes doing this, but also I get to put pressure on my opponent. He might have to make a missile turret earlier. Maybe he doesn't have the missile turret earlier. I kill a couple of SCVs. So actually the ratio of probes to SCVs is still the same as it would have been otherwise. You know, those types of things. And it just, it, it, this is why StarCraft is so replayable. Literally every game, so, so different from the others that you've played. Now, looking at this, he does have, uh, he does have some Goliaths. So there's one, a couple over here, like push back an observer. And he actually doesn't go in, but there's no anti-air in here. He has one <laughs> siege tank. So there could have been potential, uh, but you know, with all these Goliaths out, Skay has actually done a pretty good job of massing up into this five fact very very well and like look at this he's got his five factories the fifth one's just finishing and it's before nine minutes he's got uh all these goliaths out like a very healthy amount of goliaths he's got an okay amount of siege tanks it's not huge now does he want to go into an expansion or does he want to try to attack here because this is a this is a little bit of a tricky map right as the armies get bigger, it gets harder and harder to get over these bridges. Now, Speed Shuttle coming in with two Reavers. Let's see what he ends up doing with that. Flies into the side. Okay, lands his Reavers. Ooh, he's going to pick the tank right away. In fact, I think he wants that turret badly. Uh, actually, just picks off uh, some Vultures. The Goliaths will come back and push that back. So no economic damage, but does get a few units. Nicely played. Still producing out of these five facts. You know, he has a commsat, so, like, he can check on what's going on. And, you know, it's only five gates, so, or six gates. Okay, it is six gates now. There is still attack potential from Skay. Now, if you attack, that doesn't automatically mean, like, oh, I'm just going to roll through there. Because you can see he's setting things up, right? He's bringing some army over here so he could slow and move out here. And, obviously, going over bridges is really annoying. He can see if the units are coming and then focus on these reavers to get some good micro. So it's like, it's kind of a tough position. Do you do you try to push? Because 
as you go towards a macro game on this map, it, it becomes hard to move out, but it is a small map at the same time. Okay. So it's like, if you can deal with that, you can definitely go into a bigger macro game as Terran. But like, for instance, if Protoss gets an edge and feels like they can go into, let's say carriers or something, the terrain is very rough for Terran to deal with. So there's like a lot of, a lot of things that you're kind of thinking about here as Skay. Uh, his macro really, really on point, throws the starport down. He is leaving a siege tank in there. Oh, he's actually, you know what? He's sieging up here at the natural as well, so. Maybe he just needs to leapfrog. Ooh, very reasonable there. Gonna kill his own bunker off. That's actually a very normal move as you're as you're going towards a third base generally. And here it was it was too choked out. He needs to be able to move his units better, so that makes sense. And a nice little kill there on the building turret. You can see a lot of focus here from Paralyzed. This is one of the important things. Uh, you know, in you know the the meta game is so kind of secured right now. Uh, at five factory being like the strongest build at the moment for Terran that I've talked about this a lot so I'm sorry if I'm tiring you but this is like such an important part of the game right now where notice how paralyzed here he's slowing him down on this side and he's keeping his reavers live like he's really focusing on these and keeping them alive and slowing any possible push that would come out of Skay. and what has he done here he's bought time for speed zots to get out so now that he's got speed zots the window of attack is gone uh, Skay needs to make another command center. In fact, you can see his money starting to pop up. And this is a very normal thing. And this is actually something I feel like uh, a lot of players, including pro gamers, are missing a little bit, is the actual timing of this third command center. Where it's like, okay, well, we have we have this, this much money because basically you hit a certain amount of SCVs and your income is really strong. It's just over what five factory can spend. So... Uh, he is going to go ahead and throw that down. He's really well defended right now. Now, well, that being said, there's not that much anti-air here and whatnot. So he is going to fly in through the natural. Takes a ton of damage onto some of these shuttles. Uh, SCV's being drilled. <laughs> that is, is that only Zelts? Oh, okay. He does have a couple Reavers in there. So that's big. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Ooh, huge hit right there with the Reaver. They're doing some fantastic work on those SCVs. Uh, and I think this actually has been a very, very good move overall. But he is going to end up losing, I think, everything that came in here. I can't imagine any of it getting out, right? But the Reavers are getting so much value. 16 kills and... Well, I don't know if we're going to be able to check that one. Uh, as I think it's just going to go down before we can. Yeah, everything gets cleaned. But he did get a ton of kills. We are over 60... We were, like, he lost at least 15 workers there. And he lost some supply. Now, look at the numbers after that. We have Paralyze here with four bases, huge amount of gateways, Psy Storm, Speed Shuttles, 73 probes. He's got over 100 army supply. You know, it's it's tough. You're going to have to say Pretty Turtle. He's taking his fifth. I think this is actually exactly perfect. And this puts Skay in a very tough spot because he just, this, this like three shuttle thing that flew in here, even though he lost everything, he killed a few units. He bought time. He killed some SCVs. The SCVs aren't that... It's not the end of the world that he lost 15 SCVs. Obviously, it's not good, but it's like... He's still got 56. That's still pretty good economy. Uh, so he can still definitely support all of his factories and everything. You know, he has the science facility, so he's getting more upgrades. So there are redeeming things about Skay's position, but you have so much as Paralyze here. And I don't know... I, I don't feel like you should attack down into this right now, but maybe he's going to. There's not that many SCVs here, so even this Suicide Storm drop not going to do very much. Maybe he can get the tanks. Uh, gets one. And actually, the other one pops. And you can see that this attack from Paralyze is not actually trading well, right? He got, like, two tanks, a couple buildings, maybe a few vultures, and he lost a lot, man. He was, he was getting close to max there. And now we're at like 150 and Skay's supply almost didn't move. So excellent defense here from Skay. And you have to decide now with Skay. This is, this is a position where it's like, okay, we need to either take a fourth or we need to attack. And he's at 120 supply. So it doesn't feel like attack is going to be the move. We'll see. Like maybe he can set up this center. This area is all full of doodads. There's a doodad. Here's a doodad. Here's a doodad. So... These areas, like if you siege behind them, you kind of make these choke points. 
where Protoss has a harder time attacking in, but he's actually going for what looks like a full attack, like just moving forward all the way, throws some mines down. Interesting zoning tank, so it's going to be hard for the army to move through for Paralyze. But Paralyze just coming for a counterattack. Let's look what's in these shuttles. It looks like three high templars and a ton of zealots so he's gonna go ahead and start bombing out of here see if he gets some good storms off as well yeah excellent storm right there against those vultures in runs some zealots as well and ooh, almost had another storm on that high templar is gonna end up moving back he has slowed his opponent down once again and oftentimes this is like the type of move you want to make as protoss if you slow your opponent down but Skay's supply is not fluctuating as much as Paralyze's, but Paralyze has a much bigger economy, as you can see. He doesn't have probes here yet, but he will. Ooh, actually running through some of these mines. That that little minefield with this siege tank actually did a lot there. It killed a lot of units. Very well done. Skay, once, a, once again, coming up into the middle. Looks like we have another Psy Storm drop getting ready here as well. Gonna drop it next to the tank to be able to get his storms off. Ooh, five kills. And nine! <laughs> That's crazy! All right, so he actually did end up getting a lot of probes there. We're down to 50 workers once again. Another army coming down the side. Really trying to utilize these different attack paths. You know, paralyzed. Not every attack has gone well, but keeping the pressure on, taking the last base. That's reasonable. This base obviously never going to be taken by Protoss. The game is already over at that point. And Skay pushing up. It looks like he wants to control the bridge area. We'll see if that ends up working out for him, right? Like, this type of position... This is this is kind of a funny-looking thing, right? Because we have more supply for sure for Paralyze. He's kind of, like, been in control of the game a lot. But this is a good setup, right? We have some mines, some missile turrets, good spread of siege tanks... He's got those 2-1 upgrades that are so crucial. Look at this. Moving over here and setting up to siege this base. This is actually very well done from Skay. Looking at the position a little bit earlier, I was getting very nervous for him, but he's kind of choking out some of the areas that Paralyze could move through and doing a good job here. Now, it looks like he's going to kill this Nexus. So that fourth base is going to be going down. The problem down here is no probes, no probes. He'll get probes here, no problem, because he mines this out. So he is going to be able to mine that up. If Skay can kill this as well, that's a winning position, I think. Right? Like, obviously, you got to hold on to the center. But if you hold this center, super, super, super strong. Now, Paralyze coming in from uh, a pretty wide arc here. He is starting to break through quite a bit. More Siege Shanks coming up. This is such a deep, deep siege line. He's not going to break everything, but he is pushing him back from the bridges enough that he may be able to hold some of the center and thus be able to move over the bridges more cleanly with his reinforcements, right? All these reinforcements may be going to come over, join Paralyze uh, as he keeps his Dragoons on the side. Ooh, bleeding a few units in. You got to be careful about that. Skay continuing to push forward. Now, Skay is not really close to killing Paralyze. He's, he's taken some good positions on the map, but I do think he has to start thinking about taking this map, this base, right? Probably this base. I mean maybe one of those bases but those seem a little bit weird to take i don't think i've ever seen a, a a tvp where someone took those bases as the fourth but we'll see i mean i'm i'm totally open to this map and getting figured out in some different ways it's played a lot still so uh there's probably still stuff to learn here now here he goes paralyzed attacking through the center uh and yeah you can see the doodads kind of force them into this little choke but it doesn't really matter. He's got the Psy Storm. There's not that many units here from Skay. And, well, that's uh, that's a bit rough. Paralyze is taking over the center of the map once again. And Skay's supply is just getting way too low, especially considering he's still in three base. It's going to be very hard for him to refill all this. He did kill this Nexus. That's great. He's trying to be as efficient as possible, microing these siege tanks back quickly. But some more zealots get dropped out on top of them. Obviously, this is all going to get cleaned. And holding these bridges, man, that's very tough. Now, that was a good snipe. Skay walks out and gets rid of that High Templar to try to prevent any storms. But there are some, well, at least one storm right here. So hopefully we'll see that go down for Paralyzed. Throws it onto those three tanks. Man! Paralyzed takes control of this game once again very, very quickly. So... This, where we're at now, look at this. 52 SCVs, only 84 supply. The army supply of Skay is extremely low. He's got plus three attack on the way, which is nice. But 
I think he may have overextended. Like, it, it looked like he was doing okay at the bridges for a bit. But as you can see, he just, he got, he was spread a little bit too thin and Paralyze eventually broke out. Now, let's take a look at the actual mining situation. Empty, empty very soon, totally fine. Let's look at Paralyze. Empty, empty, empty very soon. Brand new, brand new. So the, the actual economy is gonna be two bases for Paralyze against one base for Ske, that's rough. If you can get another base of Skay, you're gonna be really happy about that. If it's two base versus two base, I mean, that generally that's just winning for Terran. If Terran is on like equal bases to you, that's always something that Terran is happy about. You know, it's it's almost impossible to get Terran ahead on bases. Sometimes in Terran versus Zerg, you can do it, but that's about it. Uh, and you know, that, I just, I don't know how he's going to quite manage it. Looks like he's going to set up a little bit of harassment. Okay, maybe the harassment can get him into a position where he can suddenly move out and take a new base. Because I feel like attacking again is is just like giving the game away, right? If you come out, like let's say you want to attack this base, he comes over the bridges, you're just going to run into it. Can you cover this entire area and attack up the hill and have enough units for that? That takes, that takes a lot of supply, and he's only at 130 right now. Whereas, let's say that you expand here. Can you hold this bridge? That's a lot smaller. This rectangle, a lot smaller than this rectangle. There you go. Rectangle theory. Uh, okay, so setting up, looking over the bridge. Try, he's trying to push the bridge. Like... Maybe if you really, if you try to use these two things, right? So maybe you set up really strong like here and here or something. Maybe you can hold the center and just clear the bottom half or something like that. I'm not sure, but looks like right now Paralyzed deciding this is his moment. A huge size storm on that bridge. The Goliaths do push the shuttle back, but just pushing Terran back over the bridge. If he runs away as his Zealots die, it's perfect. Yeah, see this? He saves all of his Dragoons. You have to Leapfrog once again. The Dragoons can come forward and pick off a bunch of these tanks. Look at that. Well, he doesn't come forward that time. Pulls back. I think he was just back macroing, so doesn't want to engage until he's actually got his focus on it. Has some High Templars in here. Okay, good spread from Ske. Can he hold on? Paralyzed coming down. Has a lot of Zealots in there. And the Psy Storm's going to start popping out. Good targeting. Only two High Templars get out of there, so... A few very good storms do come down, and Skay is going to end up clearing a large portion of the army here. More siege tanks rallying. We're getting very low economically here. Another Nexus has been taken. Paralyzed, just expanding to fit what's left on the map. He moves back to the bridges. <coughs> we'll see if this works out. I actually think it's time to start adding in Archons, as crazy as that sounds. I know Archons aren't that good against Terran, but... If you look at this gas bank, absolutely it'd be worth it to make three Archons, I think. You know, just get a bit more stuff out there. Yeah, EMP disables them very quickly, but like they're very tanky, right? If an EMP does not go down on one, like they can absorb tank shots really well, just kind of help your army. His army's just kind of getting a little bit small is the thing. So a nice sea chain line. Oh my God. <laughs> From downtown, the cannon kills the science vessel. Moves another into its place. He is going to be able to kill this Nexus once again. Now, can he hold this area as well? If he can siege this and hold the bridges, that could lead us towards a victory, but he does have to get that command center up here. So he is floating. That was his natural command. Had to glance down there. I knew he did not afford another command center. Uh, <laughs> and clearing these DTs. Okay, he's going to kill this. Unable to hold the bridges. He just had mines there. So now he's got like this attack and this attack is good. But with Paralyze moving over in this direction, he knows that you have to expand again. You're not going to beat him with these mineral patches, right? Each of these mineral patches represents two siege tanks. Think of it that way, right? So he's got about 16 siege tanks left after what he's got here. And even that, even if you added that to him, he's at 152. And it's still less than what Paralyze has. And Paralyze still has some income at least. Now, Ske moving down towards this bottom left. Man, I, I think this game is just going to go to Ske drying up. Like, it, he's done such a good job keeping Paralyzed, like, not able to finish him. 
Ooh, some good size storms as he's trying to push up here. But now Paralyzed coming down and like just keeping this one extra base gives him so much more income. See Psy Storm's going off absolutely everywhere. Drops so many High Templars on the high ground. And that means that every unit's going to end up dying. And I think Paralyze has done it and is going to bring us down to our last Terran player, GG Paralyze. With some solid play there. Up next, we're going to have Paralyze versus Mihu.